you to uh, what was formerly known as the Little Wheaton Awesome Hour and is now apparently just known as Little Wheaton. <laughs> Um, I'm going to tell you some stories today about gaming, and uh, then I'm going to take some questions from you if you have them, and uh, then I'm going to leave. So, uh, <laughs> thanks a lot for thanks a lot for coming. Uh, before I get started, uh, this um, this thing says I think it says no filming, but yeah. Um, so this is uh, uh, my time with you today. I and you are welcome to record as much as you like, and it is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial share alike license. Um, you know, I've been coming to PAX since 2007, and uh, it's one of those things that feels at once like a very, very long time ago, and like it just just happened yesterday. And uh, this year is the first time since I started coming to PAX that I, I actually like have a career now, and I'm, like, and I'm working a lot, and I didn't even realize until uh, like five days ago, oh my god, PAX is in five days. And I've spent the last couple of days uh, like um, bouncing up and down every time I, I have a seat somewhere. Uh, there's been a lot of like running from place to place, um, a lot of this. <laughs> I go to places, and as, uh, as I walked uh, toward the convention center uh, today, um, I, uh, I got that feeling of like, going home and, and, and going back to summer camp. And, uh, and I got really excited. Um, and it's almost enough to cut through the headache I have because I stayed up till 2.30 this morning playing Dragon Age RPG with my friends. <laughs> um, you know, I've been, I've been playing RPGs since uh, the early 80s and I started with the uh, D&D Redbox set. And right, with the coloring dice and everything. And, um, the way that I approach role playing is, uh, is, I guess it's really, really old school. I just like to tell a great story. I like to work and collaborate with my friends to tell a story that, that really entertains us. And uh, my friend Will ran the most amazing Dragon Age game last night. Uh, we didn't use minis. We uh, didn't really use anything sort of tactical. We uh, all sat down and, and told a story with characters that we've now leveled up three different times. We started at Gen Con last year, and then we played at PAX last year, and then, uh, then we played again last night. And, uh, and it was so much fun that when I woke up this morning, and, uh, and my brain was like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> Seriously? You stay up until 2.30 the, the night before PAX starts? And I was like, well, you know, in case I ever get to be an enforcer someday, I should probably be in training. Uh, so, um, uh, some of these stories are about role-playing, some of them are about classic video games. Um, they're all about how much I love being there. So, uh, this, this was recently uh, published on my blog. And uh, it's called, Will Buys a New Game. It's super effective. <laughs> a pair of 20-something bros dressed and posed in a manner that was such a hilarious cliche, if I described them exactly as I saw them, my editor would have said, you have to rewrite that, it's too cliche. <laughs> Stood near the front of the store, communicating in some kind of Roblish language that leaned heavy on the word fuck and its many derivatives. <laughs> I'm rated M, I should have said that when I walked out. <laughs> Sorry. I guess I'm Old Man Wheaton. Let me just pause for a second and tell you Old Man Wheaton's story. <laughs> There's these kids who live up the street from me, and, uh, and, and, and uh, they're sweet kids, they're, they're really sweet kids, they're like probably, there's three of them, they're like probably seven, eight, and, and ten, and uh, they like to ride their dirt bikes, like you do, and um, they race their dirt bikes up and down my street all day long, and my street's on a little bit of a hill, and my driveway is a hill, and um, like, like you do when, when you're that age, they like to race their bikes as fast as they can down the hill, and then sort of let their momentum carry them up my driveway, you know, sort of like pause at that sort of like apex of like, I guess, you know, dirt bike weightlessness and, and, then, and then speed back down the driveway. And I, I saw these kids doing this uh, uh, like maybe two weeks ago. And they were, uh, the thing is none of these kids are wearing bicycle helmets. Now look, I never wore a bicycle helmet until recently and, you know, I didn't get that much head damage to myself. <laughs> And, uh, and, but I was worried, you know, because uh, people tend to drive too fast on my street. And um, 
these, these kids were racing down out of my driveway, and I just had, kept replaying this image over and over in my head of the kids racing down the driveway and uh, just getting hit by a car. And uh, like the like you know the, the secular humanist to me was like I should probably go out there and tell them not to do that. And then like the practical realist to me was like you're going to get sued for the rest of your life if they die riding their bikes on the drive. <laughs> so I opened up. Uh, so my, my son and I, Ryan and I, were sitting in the house, uh, and uh, and, I, and I saw this happening through the through the dining room window. And I said I got to go. I'll, I'll be right back for this case to be you know, to, to not do this. So I walked out and I said, Hey, you guys. Um, uh, Really love what you're doing, and, and, it's, and it's like, you, like really, like with the skidding and like the skidding to the side, like you guys are, you know, like like um, you're doing whatever the bicycle equivalent of cleaning the cube is. Like you really, <laughs> you guys are boss. And uh, you want to speak to them a language that they would kind of understand. <laughs> so so uh, so I was like, look, dudes, um, the thing is. Uh, I'm worried that someone's gonna hit you when you race down the driveway like that. So like, I don't want you to like not ride your bikes and everything, but you know, just don't ride it down my driveway like that. All right? And the kid looks up to me, like like he's sort of like the alpha child. <laughs> looks up to me, and goes, "School, bro." Which is good. S apostrophe cool, bro. Okay, I understand that. And, and I said, thanks. Uh, yeah, sorry. And the kids, you know, go right up the street, and they continue. They're riding up and down the street, but they're just not. Um, they're not coming up the driveway anymore. And uh, I go back inside, and my son says to me, "Well, congratulations. You just told kids to get off your lawn." <laughs> I, uh, I, I tore a bunch of tendons in my ankle when I was working on Eureka last year, and I had to walk around with a cane for, uh, for, for uh, almost a month. And um, uh, it was kind of cool. <laughs> because everywhere I went, uh, people were like, um, oh, would you like to sit here? <laughs> and I had this door for you. And I got into this habit of like using the cane to like push buttons in elevators and stuff. <laughs> stuff around the cane very quickly became an extension. Uh, uh, but nothing in the world was as satisfying as shaking it at people. Uh, anyway, so that's, that's probably the longest uh, old man meeting footnote. Uh, I mean, that usually took up seven or eight pages. Uh, so, uh, as I was saying, before that happened, I guess I'm old man meeting because I looked around at all the seven and eight year olds in the store if you've forgotten where we were, there were bros. <laughs> and I felt mildly offended that these two bros couldn't be bothered to make an effort to, you know, just like tone it down a little bit. But such is the way of the bro. If they had common sense and a wisdom staff that was higher than D6 plus 2, they probably wouldn't be bros. And by the way, they teach that like bro slouch driving posture like at the douchebag driving school. Because I'm behind graduates of that school almost every day. So I walked around with the bros and I went to the Nintendo DS games. And I felt like um, I imagine a teenager would feel when he went to buy his first box of condoms. <laughs> so I felt my face get warm, and I, I caught myself like, sort of looking around to make sure that nobody was really watching me, there was no one I knew in the store, as I reached for the nearest copy of Pokemon Black. <laughs> so I looked at it, right? I turned it over and I read on the back and I thought, I cannot believe I'm, I'm really going to do this. This is going to happen. I'm 38 years old and I bought my first Pokemon. <laughs> the bros left the store, trailing expletives behind them. I'm not, I, I'm, I don't speak broglish, but apparently something was a lot of fucking bullshit. <laughs> the precious children I was so concerned about moments earlier didn't seem to notice. They probably play a lot of Call of Duty on Xbox. <laughs> or maybe I'm just a dad, near the 40. I nervously thumbed my fingers on the game as I replayed the conversation I had had with Jerry about two months ago, where he assured me that Pokemon on the DS is a fun RPG that starts anew with each release and is incredibly fun when you play it with your friends. The last game Jerry recommended to me was Might and Magic Clash of Heroes. It is one of the greatest games I have ever played on the DS not called Mario Kart. <laughs> so I trusted him. I trusted him enough to find myself standing in GameStop 
feeling like I was renting porn <laughs> and wanting to ensure that I was getting big wet asses for instead of wet big asses for. <laughs> So I approached the counter, gave in hand. Can I help you with anything? The guy asked me. Yes, I said, but you have to promise that you're not going to make fun of me. <laughs> the other guy smirked and the first guy told me that he would not make fun of me. Okay. I exhaled and realized that I had tensed up my shoulders. I forced them to relax. So, do you have... Pokemon Marker? <laughs> He sort of chuckled. The other guy failed to cover a laugh. <laughs> hey! I said, look, I can see that you're judging me. <laughs> no, man, I just thought it was funny. We both play Pokemon, the other guy said. Yeah, it's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's a really fun RPG, the first guy said. That's what my friends told me! <laughs> so, here I am, 38, buying Pokemon for the first time. I am given to understand that white version and black version are essentially the same. Is that correct? The other guy said that I had been correctly informed and added that it pretty much so. Um, the first guy typed a few things into his computer. Uh, we have the white version, but we only have it used. You know, I actually prefer to buy games new to support the developers, I said. I felt a little self-conscious, like I had just extolled the virtues of fidelity while standing on a whorehouse. <laughs> class while standing on the floor of Congress. <laughs> Seriously, fuck those guys. <laughs> no worries, he said. Okay, so I'll take this and uh, like I automatically just said, and super scribble dots. <laughs> like, I want, I want this lube, these poor magazines. <laughs> seen some of my work. <laughs> it used to make me feel like I had an arm growing out of my head when it happened, but I've gotten over that and now it actually makes me happy because I'm really proud of what I do and grateful to do it. Uh, I guess I should make a note that that's apparently an applause line. <laughs> okay. on the Big Bang Theory. Uh, do you want a bag for these? He asked. Which, come on, seriously, when you walk out of the corner shop, it's those black plastic bags that all smell weird, and you can never get the smell out of your car, and like, everybody knows, but everybody pretends that they don't. Oh yes, I was just at, um, uh, h and buying clothes, and they put them in that black bag that, you know, says shopping on it. No, it's totally cool. What do you think I have here, wet big asses for? <laughs> I'll carry them out of the open so the whole world can know my shame. <laughs> I walked out of the store, past another employee who was explaining the differences between a couple of first-person shooter games to a guy who was about my age and seemed as uncertain about his purchase decision as I was about mine, but not nearly as self-conscious. The end. <laughs>